A couple of quick questions. As a new cyclist and a person that is going to be interested in races next year, I want to be as fit as I can be next year. So when people talk about going into the base season, which I understand is basically now, how does this help my fitness in the future? I guess it's probably best to talk about the, the kind of like the goals of base training, which are basically aerobic conditioning and muscular endurance. Um, Amber, maybe you can kind of like, like draw a physical metaphor for us or a mental <laughs> metaphor so that we can kind of visualize it. Yeah. Um, I really, I like the, I like the metaphor of building the house. Some people will talk about this as like the base of the pyramid, but it is really, it's the foundation of everything that you're going to do later in the season. So, um, the way I kind of think about it is the, the main adaptations that you'll gain from aerobic conditioning with base training are really kind of the circul circulatory system and your energy delivery system. So that would be like your mitochondria and your, um, vasculature. And you can think of these things as kind of like, if you're building a house, you need to install the plumbing and the electrical. So circulation, circulation is your plumbing, electricals, your energy delivery systems. And when you do lower intensity work um, for you know, that aerobic specific conditioning, you are triggering these adaptations. And the adaptations are things like increases in vascularization. So you're actually building more blood vessels to deliver blood more effectively to your muscles that are gonna be doing the work. You are making new mitochondria, but you're also reactivating older existing mitochondria. So those existing mitochondria, you start to create all of the substrates those mitochondria need to work more effectively. So not only are you making new mitochondria, but you're making existing mitochondria work more effectively. And all of those things are the things that you need in order to do things like VO2 max work and anaerobic work. So yeah, you can jump in and start doing VO2 max work. You can jump in and start doing sprint work, but the quality of that work will not be as good because you don't have as much vascularization. You don't have as much capacity to generate and deliver energy to the systems that need it. So you want to build your capacity. So plumbing and electrical in order to do that work later on. So those are two pieces of it. The other piece is the mechanical piece, which is training those motor patterns and just something as simple as getting the tendons in your knees and ankles and the range of motion in your hips used to pedaling. Cause if you jump in and do a huge week off the couch, you could, I mean, you're setting yourself mm -hmm. up for the potential for injury. So all of these things are just kind of priming the systems to be able to accept higher level work. Like if you jump in and you start doing like really over geared sprints, that's going to be really tough on your knees. If you haven't laid this foundation of good motor patterns, kind of getting those tendons used to this type of stress, um, all of these things will provide the foundation for you to do that higher level work. And then when you get to the higher level work, you can, the, the quality of that work will be so much more depending on the quality of the, the aerobic conditioning that you did to begin with. So that's kind of, mm -hmm. think of it as you're building a house and you need to have really good quality plumbing and really good quality electrical so that when you get down the road, those systems are in place for you to do that quality work. Now let's talk about the interruption. And this is a really common question, uh, right? Pete, it's like base training, <laughs> little ring only. If you ever hit that big ring, you might as well quit and start over with base training. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It effectively wipes the slate clean and you have to rewind two months. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. But I think it, it's just like everybody says, like, how could I possibly race during base phase? Like, or if you get started training late in the season and racing starts, like what, what am I supposed to do? I have to race and do base training at the same time. <laughs> and, um, the thing is like training prepares you for racing. It's that's it. Um, you can always race. You could race off the couch if you wanted to, you would just be less prepared. So it's not that they, they fly in each other's faces. It's just one allows you to be more prepared for the other. Um, and so some people respond really well to racing and it doesn't detrimentally impact their training. Um, and other people find it hard to kind of juggle both. And so I would say if you're really racing one or two times a week, you're going to find it probably detrimental to your training. I would save it up for maybe once hopefully once a week, once every two weeks, something like that, give you something to look forward to. And that way you're not derailing your training so much. Um, think of the racing as a, 
as like the dessert for all of your training that you did for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, like you get to race after you do knock out a week of training or two weeks of training, then you get to race. Um, mm -hmm. The racing isn't going to make you faster in the same way as the tr as the base training. So you can't think of it as like they're going to just marry and be super happy and everything is going to go great. Um, they're not going to, unfortunately.